Good morning, everybody. Uh, Monday already. Uh, where does the time go? <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, apparently. <laughs> it's the start of the week. You yeah. can't. Uh, that would not be a, uh, a good start. Mm -hmm. um, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, no complaints here, except I did get caught in the rain yesterday. But uh, holy moly, I was on Nose Hill, uh, and it is lush. It is just green and there are flowers everywhere. Um, e even yesterday, it was pouring down with rain. Uh, Jimmy and I were out walking in it, not another person around, uh, and the flowers were just so vibrant against the green and the dark clouds. Uh, instantly, uh, and I don't want to say happy, because I was a little grumpy about the rain, not gonna lie, but, uh, now, if we could get some heat with that amount of moisture, holy moly, that we'd see some explosions oh, yeah. going on. So, but no, we had a uh, we had a great webinar. Um, I'm actually talking to somebody. We're going to change one of the webinars up, and our birding webinar, we're going to have a bird expert. So I'm a, I'm a plant expert, um, definitely. I am very much an amateur when it comes to birding. Uh, and we have a bird expert who's going to host that webinar. Yay! So I'm super excited to sit in on uh, that one, but we'll get you more details on that. Oh my God, I better not be losing my voice. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll have to do sign language. Yeah. Um, wow. And then tree pose. <laughs> It'll just be charades <laughs> in my terrible handwriting. Um, so anyway, speaking of those flowers, um, I thought, you know, this week, and it wasn't because of yesterday, we did have this planned. It's just, again, great timing, coincidence maybe, um, that we would talk uh, about uh, flowers. And today, we're going to talk about what is a flower, and then tomorrow, we're going to talk about all the science-y part and all the correct names. So today's the fun part, tomorrow's the science-y part, where... We give all of the names and we go, oh, what's this? It's not a petal. It actually has a real name. Ooh. Um, but we can call it petals. Um, so a flower, again, it's one of those things. I can ask 50 people, uh, think about a flower, and all of them can be thinking about a different flower. Um, orchids, geraniums, lavender. Uh, daylily, uh, uh, cherry blossom, apple blossom, cactus blooms. The list is just, it's exhausting when you think about it. I mean, it's a, it would be a good thing to literally have to sit all day and think about flowers and name all of the flowers. That, that would, I wonder if I could get a job doing that. I pretty much do have a job doing that. Like instead that. of naming colors, you name flowers? Name flowers. Yeah. Right? But yeah, like, even if you're thinking of the same flower, that's a great point, Brandy. You might be thinking of different colors. Yeah. If we're thinking of daylily, you could be thinking of Bonanza, and somebody could be thinking of Stella. One's orange, one's yellow. So the diversity uh, of the flowers is incredible. Um, and all a flower essentially is, it's the reproductive part of the plant that the plant puts out in order to propagate. It's, it's purely there to facilitate the reproduction of the plant. It just so happens that we can get food from them uh, and we can get aesthetic value from them. Uh, and a number of other things. Uh, fragrance, uh, I've got a lavender right here. It's a, you know, just, we were just talking about like the incredible smell of a lavender. I never ever will get sick of that smell. Uh, it makes an amazing tea. Um, but the flower is, is basically nature's way of showing off, but it's not for us. Uh, it just so happens we like it. It's to get pollinators to come and pollinate them so it can produce seed, so it can reproduce the plant. That's it, end of story, but we enjoy them. And one of the reasons that we like flowers so much, and don't get me wrong, I, um, I love my blooms. I've talked about that uh, at length. Uh, on this show and on the webinars, and to anybody who will stop and talk to me for a few moments. Um, I love my ornamental flowers. Uh, they make me very happy outside. Not one of my house plants is a flowering plant. Uh, I like my house plants for my foliage. 
So uh, there is a difference, but often you'll find the flowers at the end of the stem. So you'll see that, and then you've got the bloom. And that is essentially nature's way. So you know when you're driving down the highway at night, uh, you're on a road trip, hopefully everybody's done a road trip, hopefully you've got one planned, uh, lots of uh, things to see and do. And you're hungry, uh, and you see the big neon sign saying, hey, food here. Uh, I'm not going to give anybody a shout out because I don't like certain corporations. Uh, and you go, oh, I'm starving. I want to go to uh, the food place. And you drive there and see it. That's what a flower does for pollinators. So the flowers that we tend to really like are the biggest joke. Maybe we're just pollinators, but more complex. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's but, food for thought. Yeah, we are drawn to the bit. Like, you, you have some plants. And, and, you know, I was walking again. So I was walking through Nose Hill yesterday. And all of these blooms are standing out. You can see them from, you know, 100 meters away. But then you look down at your feet, and, there's, and I don't know what type they are. I, I should have looked it up. Uh, but they're white flowers, and they're about that big. Not even the size of a dime. And they're tiny, and it's like, wow, it's just incredible. They don't catch the eye. The other ones do. But essentially, this is advertising for the pollinators. Come to me. Like, come see me first. And the reason why some of these species have done so well for themselves is because of how bright they stand out. Oh, let's think about the dandelion. The dandelion works because how many times when we go outside and look at dandelions in the spring, specifically is what I'm talking, there's no other flowers. Uh, nothing else is happening. The, the perennials haven't come up yet. It's too early for us to put our annuals out. It might be April, beginning of May, and we're kind of watching uh, the weather. But the dandelions are out in show. Well, all, oh, did we just turn upside down? No, somebody said that you're sideways, so I have to fix it oh. one second. There yeah, you go. Now we're, now we're spinning around. We're in the upside down. It's Stranger yeah. Things. Stranger Things. Season five. <laughs> Flowers. Um, Hopefully that but, helped. <laughs> okay, there we go. There Good. Go. Sorry we were upside down or sideways. <laughs> I'm just going to troll people now. No. Um, but the bigger the flower, when you think of like a sunflower, so if you go out to your yard, uh, and you may have uh, tomatoes, um, and you might have some pansies, and you've got a sunflower, you look at the sunflower, and often there'll be six or seven bees at the same time all over that one sunflower, and nothing on your tomatoes. Because the tomato, the flower is that big, the sunflower is as big as my head. So the pollinators see that one immediately, and they're like, oh my god, we got to go there. Much the same way that advertising works. Um, you know, if you're leafing through a magazine, a full page ad is gonna stand out more than a one eight. You might not even see that. You might just be turning the pages. So that's how it works. It's basically saying, hey, come here and get it. Now, what ends up happening is behind the flower, and again, we'll do all the technical names tomorrow, is the receptacle for the seed pot. And once the flower is fertilized, uh, basically, the plant's like, don't need you anymore, not going to invest any more sugars, and it drops the flower. For us, aesthetically, we look at it and the flower isn't pretty anymore. The petals fall off, it starts dying, it can go black. It doesn't need it, now it wants to create the seeds. That's why we deadhead, we clean it up. We also deadhead to get the energy back to the flowers. But if we're talking purely aesthetic, we clean it up. Now we don't do that with our food plants because then we'd be cutting literally the tomato off. So the seed pod on our showy plants, we don't want. However, the seed pod on our fruit plants, we do want because that turns to food for us. So when we look at these and we see the flowers, you look at the geranium and there are three geraniums in here and there's only four flowers with another one coming. By the time this one is open, this one's probably already finished. But the size of the flower makes up for it. It puts out this colossal bloom that you can't help but miss. And you'll notice, I'll use the geranium for this one because these are both geraniums. So again, if we go right back to the beginning when I was saying, picture different flowers. 
If two people were picturing a geranium flower, both of these are correct. This one, the flowers are significantly smaller, so it puts out a ton more. And it makes up uh, in, in volume, in mass, what it can't have in size. So that's how it's hoping to attract the pollinators. And the great thing is, when we put out our plants and we want to bring pollinators uh, into our garden, uh, because we have um, cucumbers and tomatoes and strawberries and all of those other ones, they may not get the attention of the pollinators. So we put sunflowers out and geraniums and lavender and all of these incredible flowers that bloom at the end of the stem. So I should have grabbed a tomato, but we were running a little behind. That's why we started a little late. I didn't have time to run back and get one. But if you can picture a tomato, uh, very small flowers, normally a, a pale yellow. It's a little vibrant, but that's compared to the green. Uh, it's not a yellow when we think of, uh, say, an osteospermum or a marigold, a dandelion. That's a yellow that like, punches you in the face, it's like, ah, I'm yellow, okay? The yellow of a tomato is more like, hello, I'm yellow. Uh, <laughs> Brandy's laughing at my Emma. <laughs> you ever thought about a marigold punching you in the face? Maybe that's just me. Spent a lot of time with marigold. shy yellow of a tomato. <laughs> but it is, and the, the flowers, uh, a lot of times they're inside the plant. They're not out on the end of the stem. So we put out a bloom like this. It cannot be missed, a sunflower, a geranium. It can't be missed. Well, the pollinators come and they, and they do their thing. Now there's nothing left on this. They've, they've, they've taken it there, but they're still hungry. They still want to make honey. So they go, well, I'm not going to fly to a bunch of other yards. Why don't I look around here? And this is literally what pollinators do. So they'll look around and they'll be like, oh my God, I found this hidden sauce. And they get into the tomatoes uh, and then they tell the other pollinators and the hive come and pollinate that. And that's one of the reasons why putting out hanging baskets uh, right above your tomatoes, uh, planting sunflowers uh, in the back and letting your, uh, your, your peas and your beans um, stay next to them is a great way to make sure that everything is going to get pollinated. Because you bring the pollinators in. It's a lot like if you ever gone to the stall for one thing, and then while you're there, you're like, oh, well, I may as well get that, and I may as well get this. There's a reason why they put things like bread and milk at the back. They know that's what you're running in for, but on your way to run by there, you run by the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups or the marshmallows. Or, and you're like, okay, and then you <laughs> leave with six things in your arm, but you only went in to get milk. That's what we're doing to the pollinators. We're like, hey, here's your milk. By the way, did you see this? And that's where they're going to go. So the flowers... They work for us because they bring beauty, aesthetic, fragrance, cut flowers inside the house, and it's good for our mental health, spirit, soul, all of those other great things. But it also really works for the pollinators. And at the end of the day, the plant isn't doing it for us, it's doing it to reproduce. Now tomorrow, we're going to talk about how that works. We're going to talk about stamens and pistils and pollen and reproduction and seed development and everything else that this beautiful flower that's its entire purpose. Its entire purpose isn't to be beautiful, it's to advertise free food here to get what it needs. Have a great Monday, everybody. Don't let those aggressive marigolds punch you in the face. Um, enjoy your day. We'll see you tomorrow and we'll talk more about flowers. See you then, everybody. Bye.